But today we've got the engine cowl off and we're looking at the 3300 six-cylinder Jabiru engine, but it's not the same old Jabiru engine. Ought to be some new name for it, but what are the differences to this engine, Pete? The big differences in, in here is they redesigned the oiling system for the top end so that the rocker arms and valve train is all oiled through hollow push rods now rather than a, yeah, how an oil. It used to be. It used to be an oil tube coming up the side of the engine to a rubber T, which was a little bit of a maintenance issue. Okay. Uh, push rods are hollow and of course the hydraulic lifters have a little hole in the top so as they bleed down on every turn of the cam, it pushes a little oil out. So the oil then comes on up through the hollow push rods oh, I see. to okay. the rocker arm, and there's a passage drilled through the rocker arm. Uh, so the oil comes through the rocker arm, some drops into the rocker arm bushing and lubricates okay. the bushing, that. and then some goes right on through the rocker arm to the tip of it, where the oil is deposited at the top of the valve stem. So the oil is placed precisely where it's needed, rather than kind of dribbling in there and getting splashed around. So that was an yeah, so it sounds like a lot more uh, precise in the way that it's done then. Yeah. And the uh, effective the result is, even in a tail dragger or in any other airplane, you're going to get really good lubrication through that means. Right, and we eliminated the maintenance issue with those rubber tees. Yeah, yeah lowering maintenance is always a good thing. Yeah. What else is new about the engine, Pete? Well, they converted about eight months ago from the standard flat bottom lifters were actually a uh, lifter out of a Chevy 350 V8. Ah, is that right? Okay. Uh, to roller cam followers, similar to what Lycoming has in their engines. Uh, and to go along with that, of course, you, your cam profile has to be different. And it made quite a difference in the engine. How so? Well, the first thing we noticed when I started the first one of these up that I got, it idles very smoothly at a little below 700 RPM, where we had to have 850 before to get ah, really? idle. Okay. That's uh, a function of that component change. Yes, yep. And that's been very noticeable when you pull the power off on descent. Uh, ah, yeah. You can slow down a little easier. It's a pretty slippery airplane. And, but uh, Yeah, that little bit of RPM difference might make a, a noticeable difference of the power. Yeah. Then the other thing that it has done, um, the engines are still rated at 120 horsepower, but we have more power than we've ever had. More power. Is that Definitely. right? That more combination power. of things has resulted in more power, has it? Yes, and, huh. and it's a different cam profile, and I think the valves are opening more precisely with those ah, okay. roller followers on the cam. The valves are opening and closing more precisely at the right times. For the firing sequence. And yeah, so and, and I think what it is, the, the cam profile, when it comes time to open an intake valve, uh, the cam is steeper, so the valve opens quicker, and it gives a little more time being fully open to draw some fuel charge in there. I see, okay. And then when it's time to close that valve, it closes quicker because the cam profile is steeper. And uh, so it allows a, a little longer time for fuel to get in there. And of course, when you're when you're turning 2850 RPM, the, the difference in time is in milliseconds, but yeah. it does make a difference. Interesting. But this has more power than we have ever had. Do you have a horsepower number difference, or is it a? Uh, is it a Jabru is still publishing the same power curve that they have before. So officially, there's no difference in the rating. But uh, you can tell um, Gentlemen, good to you. Enjoy it very much. with a propeller that on the previous engine climbing out at 80 knots in this airplane, we'd be at uh, 2,800 RPM. Uh, now, since the change, uh, same propeller, 80 knots climbing out full throttle, we're at 2920. Oh, really? Okay. Well, so, there's a way uh, you get a measurable difference yes. that you're seeing from yeah. these things. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, 100 horse, uh, 100 and RPM more doesn't seem like a lot, but at that point of the power curve, yes, that's it. It's that's probably quite a, bit more, a couple huh? of hundred feet per minute in the climb rate. Wow. Okay. So there's another very significant yeah. number there. Yep. Yeah. Anything else about the airplane, uh, about the engine? Excuse me. Has, that has changed, Pete? Yeah, we changed the alternator, uh -huh. the wiring of the alternator. Uh, this is a permanent. What's that done for you then? Well, more electrical power at lower RPM. Okay, well, permanent I'm guessing with the, people that love all the gizmos and bells and whistles in the yeah. world, because you're taxiing out, you're exactly in that situation. That's when everybody's right. flipping everything on. Huh? Yep. 
Yep. Uh, it used to be that you had to manage your avionics and lighting and so forth if you had a lot of equipment uh, and not turn everything on when you're just idling. Uh, now, it doesn't matter, you can turn everything on. It's still a permanent magnet alternator, which means it's the power that it produces is related to RPM. It, it just produces a lot more voltage and amperage at lower RPMs. Yeah. Well, precisely the place where the problem might have arisen earlier, mm -hmm. because you had a capability of, uh, of discharging the battery uh, the way it had been. We never had the problem with our like, sport airplanes because all of our lighting and everything is LED and it doesn't draw much power. Ah, okay. But some of our home builders would put these in airplanes where they had Wayland conventional strobes and the uh, wingtip lights would take four amps aside and they turn them on right away. At the same time, yeah. the alternator... Four amps aside, yeah, that's quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, at the same time, the alternator was trying to recharge the battery that got drawn down when you were starting, and then they flip on, <laughs> uh, especially if they have something in there like a Garmin 430, which requires a bit of power. Does it okay? Turn that stuff on right away, and the transponder also is a power hog. So you turn everything on, and, and there would be more power drawn than was being produced. Ah, okay. But now, uh, even in, in those airplanes, I think you could turn everything on and you would have enough uh, at, at just above a, an idle RPM that uh, you wouldn't be drawing anything out of the battery. By the way, do some of these changes also, uh, are they included on the 2200 four-cylinder or is it just on this engine? No, the 2200 also has uh, the roller cam followers and the hollow push rods. Okay. And uh, the two engines for many years have shared the same alternator, so the same uh, upgrade. Okay, so basically yeah. both 2200 four-cylinder, about 80 horsepower, and, or this one that we've been talking about yeah. have all these same features on right. it. Well, they still require some maintenance, of course, and anybody with an engine knows you got to pay attention to that stuff. Do you go around and do courses, Pete? And if so, do you have any coming up that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, we've been uh, putting on four or five maintenance, uh, maintenance and rebuild courses for the last several years, anyway. And uh, we've got a couple coming up: one in Bakersfield, California, okay, October 31st and November 1st. We'll have a little Halloween session there. I hope it won't be too scary. <laughs> Uh, and then we're going to do another one in Shelbyville at our headquarters, uh, Shelbyville, Tennessee, November, uh, I think, 14th and 15th, I think is the dates on that one. Okay, so if you uh, need maintenance, want to learn more about maintenance, uh, contact the company and find out how you can particip participate in those. How do we find you on the web, Pete? Just give us the address and we'll stick it up on it's the screen for everybody. www.usjabaroo.com. There you go. And on that, you can find about the airplanes with their new agreeable mm -hmm. pricing and lots more about the engines and everything else that you can uh, service out of Shelbyville, uh, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, more about the Jabiru airplanes and lots of other airplanes available on my website, bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Pete Karate and myself here at the Midwest LSA Expo.